We all love movie heroes, but what happens when the good guys go bad? Hey movie fans, so recently I did this video proposing to you that I think at the end of episode 8, Rey will join the dark side, and Kylo will join the light, more or less completing what is known in wrestling as a double turn. A good guy goes to be a bad guy, and a bad guy becomes a good guy. So, more or less, to accompany that video, I'm doing a top 5 good guys gone bad, and a top 5 bad guys gone good, more or less showing, yeah, there's a precedent for this happening, of people switching sides, and it doing it incredibly well. So today I'm going to start off with... Good guys gone bad. At number five, we have the most recent entry on either list, Hans in Frozen. Oh, I should also preface this by saying any of the guys on this list, either good guys gone bad or bad guys gone good, spoiler alert. That being said, Hans. Sorry if I just spoiled Frozen for you. But Hans from Frozen is the most recent entry on this list, and almost kind of the most obvious. I When I first watched Frozen, I could tell that this guy's a little too good, and he's trying to steal the, print, the kingdom away from Elsa, who maybe Hans is more deserving because he won't just bail the kingdom because he did something wrong, Elsa. But so Elsa is runs away, and Hans is organizing this hunt to try and get her back, and... It's all just a ploy, so he can rule the kingdom because he's a middle child, because of course he is. And if he's just trying to steal his own kingdom away, because he will never inherit a kingdom, because he's got this long list ahead of him. At least Disney made it like, okay, you have solid reasons. You will never, ever rule, but maybe you probably shouldn't. But the way he's portrayed leading up to the reveal is, I am the perfect match for Anna. I am a great guy. I finish your sandwiches for you. I am just so great. It's perceived to be just an all-around great guy and another great line in the Disney princes. And then he's a jerk. Hans, you're evil. Have fun with that. And your weasel friend. Wessel friend. At number four, we have Harry Osborn from Spider-Man. Now, I say Spider-Man because his turn is one of the better ones, but I would actually say that he's a bad guy from two onward. But in Spider-Man 1, he's definitely a good guy. For a rich kid, he's actually very pleasant. He sticks up for Peter. He's an all-around good guy. He's still a good guy at that point. That being said, his turn to evil is probably one of the standout things about an already great tr trilogy with the Spider-Man trilogy. His turn from best friend to Harry to... with Peter, sorry. His turn from being best friends with Peter to only trusting Peter and wanting Spider-Man absolutely dead to realizing who Peter is and wanting to kill both Peter and Spider-Man and then ultimately turning back to the good side, which, spoiler alert for the next video, he's not on the face turn list, but there is a Spider-Man character on there. But his turn to the dark side, for lack of a better term, was really, really well done. Of You can understand why it was his the death of his father that pushed him, and then more and more interaction with Spider-Man, this growing hatred, really made him this great villain, and great heel, which, understanding the motives of the villain makes them a better villain, and makes their turn to the dark side that much stronger, which I really think works in the case of Harry Osborn. At number three, we have Harvey Dent from The Dark Knight. Now this guy, it is so beaten over your head that he is supposed to be the good guy, even so much referred to as Gotham's White Knight. It's like, okay, we get it. He is supposed to be Gotham's savior. So what happens when the savior falls? Well, then you have to have a new hero, a Dark Knight. Wow, do you get the message of the movie now? I'm sorry, I really shouldn't bash this. This is one of my favorite movies of all time. But it's just kind of obvious that this was the, supposed to be the one that you're supposed to root for. But Harvey Dent, of course, gets corrupted by the Joker, which I really think that's, that's the power of the Joker in The Dark Knight. That's the masterful work that he does, is manipulating the minds of others. Not so much his whole chaos thing, it's just him being able to 
infect the minds of people from the inside, exploit their more or less weaknesses and things going on in their mind. And so Harvey Dent, after the death of his girlfriend, who suddenly changed from Katie Holmes to Maggie Gyllenhaal for reasons, oh yeah, mad money, it she gets blown up, which is, what? Superheroes are supposed to save people, they don't get blown up. That drives him to the point of insanity, to wanting to go after almost everybody involved with her death, which, again, like my argument for Harry Osborn, makes him a more compelling villain because you understand why he's evil. The turn is that much greater because you understand the logic. You just don't want to accept it because it was a character that you really, really liked and they've gone to this dark place. At number two, we have Jack Torrance from The Shining. Now, to be perfectly fair, he was never quite normal from the beginning, but then again, it was just Jack Nicholson being Jack Nicholson up until a certain point, and then he goes absolutely crazy. So what goes wrong with Jack Torrance in The Shining? So he takes his family up into the secluded mountain hotel in up in Colorado, which I have seen numerous times. I've seen the outside of. So he goes to the secluded Colorado mountain resort in the middle of nowhere, and just to get away for a while, just so he could write his book. But in the process, he absolutely goes insane because his hotel is haunted, they're in the middle of nowhere, they can't reach anybody. That's an ultimate case of cabin fever, except better than the movie Cabin Fever. So he goes mad and essentially he's trying to kill his wife, Shelley Duvall, and their kid who just won't shut up about red rum. Yes, I know what the red rum means, I know. So he just absolutely goes insane because of this, all these ghosts telling him that he needs to take care of his family and not like a, an emotional support type of take care of, but like a ah, take care of. You, where did that come from? But you know that here's Johnny, that kind of take care of the most iconic scene in his whole film. But to be fair, we got to go back to he was originally a good guy that just devolved into madness. And it was a nice steady progression of it doesn't happen overnight. Like anything, like Shawshank told us, it takes time and pressure. And it, that's essentially what happens to Jack Torrance. Time and pressure gets to him and this madness that slowly starts to chip away at his humanity, which makes The Shining not really scary, but more psychological, seeing the effects that isolation and, of course, ghosts can have on someone's psyche to the point of driving them to utter madness, trying to kill their family with an axe, and yelling random Johnny Carson catchphrases, but whatever. But, however, that is not the best example of good guys gone bad. At number one, we have the man who hates sand himself, Anakin Skywalker. Now, to be fair, I think there'll be some other examples that are probably better in terms of execution. But in terms of overall impact, I can't deny that there's nothing bigger than Darth Vader, Anakin Skywalker. Turning from good guy, from slave pod racing th guy, to supreme dark lord of the universe second only to emperor palpatine there's no bigger impact in the overall film world or even in the world of star wars than darth vader the execution absolutely could have been better hayden christensen not a good actor not a good pick for anakin and i will never let that go and the scene it basically he turns to darth vader in one scene but there was at least some form of a progression the first one leaving his mother feeling that isolation Second one, seeing his mother die conveniently right in front of him on the one night that he's there to see her. Weird. And then the fear of losing Padman, the next one. All this kind of culminates together to him becoming Vader. The performances weren't that great, and I could, but I could at least see what George Lucas was going for in turning Anakin Skywalker. It could have been better, but there's no denying that there's still a huge impact of he was a good guy and becomes the ultimate bad guy because when it comes to bad guys, you really can't beat Darth Vader and him coming from such humble little jingle all the way origins to Darth freaking Vader. Yeah, that's the ultimate example of good guys gone bad, but it wasn't all doom and gloom for Darth Vader, but save that for the next list. What would you guys think about top five good guys gone bad? What are some that I may have missed? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you like what you've seen and want to see more, subscribe to the channel or 
find me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Uncharted Media. Stay sharp, movie guys and gals.